this is this is, uh, this is my live boxing, and yeah, I get, I get more joy out of this than anything else. <coughs> and then I'll be emailing promoters. I mean, I'll email uh, Eddie Earn, Frank uh, Warren. Um, yeah. Brilliant guy. Do you know what I mean? He said to me like, "Oh, you're all right, mate. You're. All right. I've only I've done three fights. I've won three fights, right?" I'm all right, and Tony was coming up to me, and he was saying, "Oh, do you know what, Geezer? You're all right. You are. You, you're going to go to places and that." And I, I believe him because it's something about him, right? That just makes me think, yeah, he knows, mate. He knows. I think he gets me. Do you know what I mean? Like he gets me. So, what is your fight record? Officially? Yes, please. Zero. Do, do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Well, there's not much really to say, is there? Um, obviously, referees though in the back pocket, you know. All comes down to this at the end of the day. We've got what I call World War Three. That's what the show's called. Not actually World War Three, but um, if you let any of my boys get out of you, it will be World War Three. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's at the core market in Kettering. We're sold out. You've now got the contracts for Kettering. Yeah, yeah, well, we're working with them, and I said I'll call you, but I'm doing this. So, yeah, I'll right, call okay. you. Okay, all right. Make sure you do something. Yeah, yeah. He's ready. This boy's ready for the likes of uh, Chris Eubank Jr., Gennady Golovkin. Oh, we're ready for it all. Well, I got rid of Tony, didn't I? Why? Well, I, well, because I don't know if you read the newspaper, mate, but basically, it was just taking money off me, and I, and I couldn't, I couldn't have it, mate. I'm now with someone called Frank Warren, and I'm really doing well for myself now. I really, he's really getting me on the right road to success. I was with that boy for many years, and uh, this is how he treats me. Uh, it's disrespectful. Um, he went off to Frank Warren's promotion, and now he's obviously been advised by someone to sue me. Are we going to go in then? Oh no, I don't own this place anymore. No, uh, can't afford it. It's in Andrew Smith. I'll show you the new place. Uh, let's go. Alright, uh, so uh, the, this is a new office. I mean, it's only temporary. Should we go in? Right, so uh, this is the new place. Um, well, not this. This is like an arcade. So basically, because rent was a dear and the court case and all that, um, I have to I have the offices at the back. I mean, it's not ideal, but um, you know, I mean, no one comes in it, so it's it's alright. So these are the offices. This is this is where the big fights happen. Um, yeah. Left it open. Um, yes, this is, this is the office. Uh, got everything I need. Uh, got a phone, calculator for the expenses. Uh, that was £10.50. That was the budget for the last show. Um, yeah, I've had this place for about eight months now. Uh, yeah, it's not great, but it's, uh, it does the job. Got everything you need here, all the mock cons. Um, I mean, it's quite a quiet place anyway. I mean, it's not too bad. No coat work though. Um, so, um, yeah, the latest, I mean, the latest I've heard is that uh, Andrew Smith's fight in Floyd Mayweather, that was announced recently. Uh, unbelievable. You know, um, how has he got that fight? How is that happening? I mean, he just fought Canelo Alvarez, I'm sure you all saw, and, and won, somehow. Um, and now he's fighting Floyd Mayweather, it's ridiculous. Um, but, you know, he can go and lose, and then, you know, he'll get his high payday, and then that'll be him, you won't hear from him again, but... Now back to the Billy C Morning Show. Interact with the show at BillyCBoxing.com, part of the Billy C Boxing Network. And we're coming to you live. From the Billy C. Studios in Lake George, New York. And welcome back to the Billy C. Boxing Show. Now, first things first, 
Um, let's talk about the WBC's middleweight champion, Andrew Smith. This guy is from a small town called Kettering in the UK. He's fought the best of the best. And now, uh, since he's beat all the best of the best, there's only one guy left for him to fight, and that's the self-proclaimed best ever, Floyd Mayweather. What do you think? Call in right now. I want to hear your thoughts, man. Should Floyd fight this guy? Because in my opinion, Andrew Smith needs to fight Floyd Mayweather Jr. What's your thoughts? Give me a call right now. I learned about Mayweather. Well, he's overrated. He's absolutely pathetic, mate. Look, look at him. He's gonna fail. Okay, one day he's gonna come down. I'm telling you, that's very soon, if you know what I mean. He is pathetic. Absolutely useless. The press conferences and all the things leading up to this, and you've watched the show. I mean, has he gotten under your skin at all well, at this point? Has he gotten under my skin? <laughs> no, mate. No, Ian. Not one bit. Like I said, he's pathetic. And I'll tell you something, we'll see you can fight, mate. Because I've got a really, really powerful left hook. I've got a game plan for Mayweather. See. Like this, um, like I said before, in all my interviews, everybody had a game plan for Floyd Mayweather. It's obvious that the game plan that everybody had for Floyd Mayweather wasn't working, you know? Come May 5th, uh, they can have a game plan, they can keep pressure, you can apply pressure. Uh, you can you can throw the big left hook. It's not gonna work. You know, at first I was I was very confident, and I thought, hang on a minute, this guy. I've watched him fight loads of times. I've seen his tactics, but now, yeah, I know this might sound a bit stupid to you, but now discovering, I mean, I had a bit of a a party life going on a little bit, all right. I was having a few drinks, celebrating like you normally would. Threw me off training a bit, all right. Come back and think, yeah, I'm gonna train for a bit, you know, with the old the old boys I used to meet and that. Uh, you know, a lot of family down there, and you just realise that it's been smashed down, it's been demolished. My old, my old gym, I can't train there now. You know, and uh, so I'm a little under-equipped for the fight at the minute, and I'm feeling a bit anxious, if I'm honest. A bit underprepared, I think. It's where my gym used to be. What the fuck, this guy's been knocked down. And the fucking bloke I used to know. He's to own a place. He ain't told me anything. I saw him the other fucking week. So you're all mate, yeah, business is going alright. We'll just get knocked down last week or something. I just come here, lift weights, get fit. I remember some of the greatest fights I've ever had. I prepared in this gym for it. And that's how I win. Like a family in there, you know? And not one of them, not fucking one of them told me they were gonna knock the fucker down. It's fucking ridiculous. So um, what am I gonna do now? I ain't got no fucking, I ain't got no weight, so I ain't got nothing. What am I going to do? I'm on my way back up. Um, problem I'm having at the moment, of course, is uh, press. They're not been very kind to me. It's been, um, I'm trying to get, uh, I'm trying, you know, I'm a promoter at the end of the day. I'm not a TV personality, but I'm trying to get, you know, uh, some of my fighters some good publicity. And every time I ring at the radio station or every time I talk to a TV show, they're saying about the court case or about I'm a rip-off or I'm a fraud or, you know. Basically, mate, is that I found out it was taking roughly about 90% of my money that I was making. 90%, yeah? I mean, that 10% don't give me a pot to piss in, really, if you think about it. So I was like, right, what the hell is going on with my money? So I went down, I sorted it out. I thought, look, I didn't, you know, probably read this contract. He's, you know, it's illegal to take this much money from me. And then, right, do you know what I mean? I spoke to a few people I know that are in the, uh, you know, lawyer business, solicitor business and that. They said I could take action against this. So I was like, right. I think I need to, to be honest. So I told him, look, you've, you've rinsed me of my money, you're taking credit, I've got nothing at the minute, and I'm doing all the work, you know? So I sorted that out, and I went down there and got him sued, basically. You know, I went to court, and uh, I mean, I think this is where, you know, 
things started to kick off a bit more in the media, you know, as I got a bit more famous, he got a bit more, you know, infamous really. And the funny thing is, yeah, he actually thinks, Tony actually thinks he's famous, but the only thing he's actually famous for, yeah, is ripping me off. That's it. Charles McManus, I'm currently working with. Um, actually, he's. Yeah, it's about loyalty. He's the only fighter left that still wants to be with me. Well, boxing was. <clears throat> was very much an, uh, one of the earliest memories I can really remember. Um, it was kind of through my mum, actually. We, um, yeah, we, we used to watch TV a lot, you know, we didn't really get out much, you know, we, it was just pretty much me and her. And um, if I remember right, I think there was this game show that was on TV. Um, I can't even remember what it was called, maybe like It's a Knockout. Um, I think it would have been kind of, kind of similar to like Big Break, you know, with Snooker, but it was a boxing kind of thing. And, um, and they had like celebrities trying to home to each other, and I just thought, I can do that. It's easy. Well, yeah, so Charles the Manny to McManus, it stemmed from a couple of years ago. There's this restaurant over in Kesham, does amazing food. I mean, I love my food. Yeah, it's, it's one of the few joys I get in life. And um, so this, this restaurant, um, the owner, Mr. Wong Tong, serving us and, and being really friendly and everything. And um, I think it was about the summertime, and all of a sudden, you know, he, he wasn't there. I, I, just you know, kind of assumed he was on holiday or something, um, but he, he didn't come back for like six months. And you know, there's, there was this rumor that so I'd go around saying that you know, that, that I ate him. <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't really want to talk. Can we move on, please? I just think Tony's got a lot of explaining to do. And uh, you know Frank, Frank Warren, he's he's a man for me at the minute. He's yeah. he's doing a good job. He's getting me there. He's not letting me down. He don't think about the money. He thinks about my health. I think with Tony, if he gets his priorities straight, and has a word with me, you know, explains himself a bit, there might be a chance of redemption for him. I think. But other than that, that boy got it too many times on the head. And now he thinks he can make it on his own. Do you know how much I've lost? because of misloyalty. <clears throat> I mean, I took him all the way to the top and he pushed me off the edge. But it's fine, I'll get it all back. He comes to me and says, I'm really sorry, I'll drop the court case. You can have all the money back that you signed in that contract. Then, yeah, maybe, but he won't do that. If he's watching, leave Frank Warren, come back to me. I'll get you all the fights. And that was another thing you used to go, oh, I'm not going to fight the core mark at all, like he was too good for it. All his local fans had to go and travel. When Frank Warren took him on, they had to go to Las Vegas. I mean, so who do you think you are? What would you, would you rather, fight at the MGM or the core mark at all? I know which one I'd rather fight at, and that's core mark at all. That was ridiculous. So basically, can't do fights here anymore. They said, oh, uh, because of the last documentary, because of me offering free tickets. Right, well maybe, look, if anyone, I don't know, what's well, on YouTube. If anyone's watching this on YouTube and it's before the show, I might be able to uh, wrangle a few tickets, but uh, we're pretty much sold out, um, as they always are. Yeah, they won't let me, uh, they won't let me put farts on anymore. It's ridiculous. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. I made this, I made this place at least 100 pound over the last six months, <laughs> if not more. And I know what it's about, right? Actually, I don't care if they get me, right? Tony is the bloke who runs this place, right? His best mate, Andy, that 70-year-old bloke, he's wanted to run barn dancers here for the last year. And I knew he wanted my Saturday nights. But I was like, the Saturday night fight nights, we've got a contract, and they've gone, all oh, because of all the bad press and because you've given away free tickets, uh, he's going to have his barn dancers here now. So now his barn dance every Saturday night, I've just been told. They won't make as much money as I did for them. 
ridiculous. I mean, it's just fucking one thing after another. Facilities are shit as well. So that's that's that that done. Hope you hope you're liking losing money. <laughs> so. <clears throat> and they they go in. Oh, you can't give away free tickets. It's going to have to come out your own pocket. I said I'm not paying for it. So now we do it at Kids Kingdom, Kids Play, which is half of it is a like a kids play area, and the other halves, oh, well, you can't really say arena, but near that, and that's where we do our, so we do some of our fights, um, and I get uh, Charles McManus on a few cards there, so it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Frank Warren's gone. Take the Floyd Mayweather fight. You sort out your own training, you sort out this, you sort out that, and <laughs> he don't know what he's doing. I, I was the one that used to help him with all that stuff. I used to go to the big Tesco at the road and get him his meat. Frank Warren do that, but he doesn't, does he? Who did his big shop? I did. Who helped him clean his house when he was on over once? I did. Frank Warren do that, I don't think he would. It would just be in his nice little suit getting old and having fish eyes. Don't put that in if it's slanderous. I didn't really party. It was all training for me and everything. It was only till sort of after the whole thing kicked off is when I started partying a bit. Yeah, admittedly, he did, you know, stop me one or two times when I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll go to this party, uh, whatever, you know. And he thought, no, it's, you, you got training. You got training the next day. You can't do that to yourself. Oh, Alright, fair enough. I didn't party much back then, but you know, after it all kicked off, that's when I started really partying. So, no, I don't think that's completely accurate, to be honest. Alright, uh, so I'm not having the best day in the world. Got a call this morning. Uh, from Vladimir Klitschko's lawyer and what he's basically saying is he wants a meeting with me ASAP so this one here posh place uh, don't know what it's about I've got a guess that it's um, slanderous comments I'm supposed to have made I mean I said a few things on the last documentary which I told you to edit out but you didn't but there's no proof I mean, all I said was that I was getting Charles McManus to fight with Vladimir Klitschko and I tweeted him it's not my fault we didn't reply. Technically, my comments are still accurate. But anyway, they're not going to let you in, so I'm going to go in now, and I'll come out and tell you the damage. But it's fuck. It's all I need. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Eh? To be honest, I was very naive. Um. He, he was saying, saying a lot of things. Um, I think I was so, so desperate to, to get somewhere. I was believing him and he's a good guy. You know, he's, he's a good guy. Um, wouldn't necessarily say he's got maybe the best business brain, but he does try hard. You know, he's a good person overall. <coughs> All right. So uh, yeah, um, can't say too much. Um, legally, I can't say anything. But let's just say uh, Tony McFrancis, boxing promoter, went in there, worked my magic, and um, everyone's about to hear some very, very big news soon. Let's just say, has Frank Warren ever done it? No. Has any boxer promoter ever done it? No. Keep you on Sky News, because you're about to hear some very, very interesting stuff. All right, I'll leave you to it. It's getting wet.
know. I mean, anybody who knows anything about boxing knew that that fight was a mismatch. It's going to be so one-sided. It couldn't be any more one-sided than a boxing match can be. I want people to tune in to see the most devastating knockout they'll ever see in their life. Safe fights in heavyweight boxing. Either guy can knock each other out. Look, boy, this is for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Many years ago, that was the most coveted sports office in the world. We're talking about Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano, Muhammad Ali, Larry Holmes. The greats of boxing have held this title. He wins. In my opinion, it's the biggest upset in heavyweight boxing history, even bigger than when uh, James Buster Douglas upset undefeated Iron Mike Tyson in Tiger in 1990. It will be a huge win. Greeks a little less helpful when it comes to a fight plan. You gotta get on this side and bang hard to the body. They all try that. That don't work. What will work is anybody's guess, according to the man known as the Cannon. Now there are 50 victims on my list. I'm repeating it all the time, but you guys don't forget about it. Charles McManus guy has never won a fight. Let me repeat that. He has never won a fight. Not one. Oh, he, how dare he put his fighter in a fight for the world championship? What? Why? What? Because he's going to lose. It's ridiculous. What was Tony ever did was rob me. Just rob me. That's what he is, mate. He's a thief. Oh, absolute thief. You know, it goes to the gym when I'm already built enough to take on Mayweather. Look at him and look at me. Yeah. You'll be fine. But I'm The guy is a wrong Look, you're not. You're not getting out of the fight now. It's all set. 